I'm Steve from This Oak with Cars and this is my 1960 Austin Healey Sprite. And this car is for sale right now on eBay. This is one of six Mark I Sprites that I found here in a barn. And I have been referring to this one as Barn Sprite number four. So if you want to see previous work that I've done on this car, go to my YouTube channel and search for Barn Sprite number four. I have also included a list of all the parts I put onto this car in the auction description. This is a great car, and this would make a great project for someone, but this is a project, so whoever buys this car should go through every system, check everything. The car does run and drive so that you can load it onto a transporter. The generator is not charging at the moment, and I have intentionally left it that way so that whoever buys this car knows that they are buying a project car and not something that they can drive home. I will make sure that the battery is fully charged so that you can transport it so it can be started and unloaded and loaded several times if it needed to be. So let's take a look around it. There's signs that this car has been repainted. I don't think that the red is the original color. It could possibly have been an iris blue car originally, but it does appear to have red overspray in parts, so uh, I'm sure that the car has been repainted. The car looks pretty nice. There's only a couple chips. You see one down on the rocker panel there. And there's a couple chips here on the back. Right there. But other than that, the paint job looks pretty alright. There's a little chip right there. You can see the wax. The white stuff there is just wax in the corners couple chips up here there was a lot of bird droppings on it so there's a little bit of splotchiness you can barely see it especially out here in the light those might be able to be polished out I'm not sure the convertible top looks in pretty decent shape there is no tears in it no holes you can still see through the windows the convertible top was up when it was stored, so it has not lost its shape. You can see it's still pliable. On the inside, the seat covers look in pretty decent shape. The door cards are there. You can see the dashboard. This car does have a vintage Motorola radio. The odometer reads 72,799 miles. As with a lot of these cars, the light switch here, an ignition switch, it needs a new clamp to hold it tight. It does spin there. So you have to be careful when you're trying to turn it on because it wants to turn on the lights and the ignition at the same time. The black carpeting looks in decent shape. It does continue on to the back. That's a tonneau cover. It's a full tonneau cover, so that covers the entire cockpit when you have the top off. And you can unzip one side to leave just a driver's area uncovered for driving it if you don't have a passenger with you. The original convertible top frame looks in good shape. The tires on the car are the ones that were on it when I got it, so you will want to put on new tires before you try to drive it. But they are certainly good enough for transporting it across the country. The chrome on this car is in decent shape. It's not show quality, but it's a good driver quality. This car does look good enough that you can take it to car shows. Certainly not a Concorde car though. Let's take it for a drive. The car's been sitting here for a couple hours now, so this will be a cold start. I'm gonna turn the ignition switch until I see the ignition light turn on. Make sure it's in neutral. I'm gonna pull the choke out all the way and this car does have a mechanical fuel pump so we'll need to crank a little bit to fill up the fuel bowls and the carbs there we go
I put some fuel in. It reads three quarters now. Gonna go in a second, then in the first. take a look under the bonnet. I did put a new battery in the car as well as new battery cables. A new water temp and oil pressure gauge had to be put in so you see the new sender for the water temp there. New radiator cap. Over here a new master cylinder for the brakes and the clutch. The front carb has a new Viton seal between the float bowl and the carb housing. And there's also a new fuel pump down there. All three brake hoses have been replaced. I think that's about it. This car was pretty complete when I got it. Underneath the car, you can see a slight amount of rust there on the front of the frame rail on the driver's side. Typical cave in there on that cross member from people jacking up the car from it. Oil pan looks in good shape. Typical British car leaks there. Someone has done some patches to the floors before. So this car could use new floors put in it. You see more patches over on this side. I think some of the old floor is above some of these sections of floor patches that they put in. Coming back further in the car, you see the fuel tank. I did have that fuel tank out and put a new grommet in it and checked the fuel sender. It was surprisingly clean inside there. You can see the Rear brake hose there that's been replaced. We're on the other side. Exhaust is surprisingly intact. No big rust holes. Doesn't look the greatest, but there's no holes in it. And looking at the back of the car here. No big rust here in the back of the trunk like you sometimes find on these cars. There is some weird patches here. Looks like someone's done some brazing where the bumper mounts are. Maybe just on that one side. A little bit of rust right here. And on the other side, someone has put a little bit of Bondo there in that same position. In front of the wheels again, a little hole right there. On the other side, you can see a little mismatch from the patch that someone put on the floor. This is behind the front driver's wheel. There's a patch on the inner fender there. The front of the wheel, the bonnet looks good. Same condition on the passenger side. Behind the wheel, they have a little patch there, just like on the driver's side. And I'm sure that these floor patches were done a long time ago. It's pretty crude compared to what you would do today. But they did a good job of not making any of that visible on the outside of the car. Here's a look looking down the passenger side rocker panel. And the driver's side rocker panel. Here's the underside of the front bonnet. Doesn't look like there's been any front end damage to this car. A lot of times these can be pretty wrinkled up. 